Welcome to the Frontier Podcast, where we take the internet's best tech articles and transform them into audio so that you can enjoy them on the go. Today's episode is brought to you by Presence Media, a Colorado-based SEO and web design firm. They create beautifully modern websites that effectively attract new customers for their clients. Visit them at PresenceMediaDenver.com. We'll have that link listed below. Today's episode was written by Ernest Opetit. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The article is entitled Autonomous Vehicles and the End of Privacy, and it's a very in-depth analysis of all of the future technologies that we like to talk about on this show, including driverless cars, AR, VR technology, uh, and some of the implications that come from these technologies, like the lack of privacy. So we're going to dig in, and I hope you enjoy the episode. If you'd like to read the original article, including the embedded images, you can find it on medium.com. That link will also be listed below. Everything everywhere will soon be continuously recorded and uploaded to the internet. This will start with dense urban areas, but over time, every single square meter of every part of the globe will be recorded. Advances in computer vision and AI mean this data will be usable at scale, which will revolutionize advertising, law enforcement, and bring us back to a pre-privacy world. And yes, you guessed it, the movie to pair this post with is Minority Report. Video everywhere. Here is where we are today. Satellites and drones record videos of everywhere on Earth. This is what enables, for instance, Terabella, a Google subsidiary, to sell HD video feeds from any place on Earth for commercial applications. In most cases, the resolution is still quite coarse, but for instance, you can monitor whether a truck is on a building site from space, but not see the license plate. CCTVs and home camera systems have proliferated as sensor costs have dropped and surveillance requirements increase both at a national security level and the individual level, home security, baby cams, etc. There are more than 6 million CCTVs in the UK. Consumer video recordings have increased ridiculously. For an order of magnitude, more than 4 million hours of video are uploaded to YouTube each day. This isn't slowing down as the 50% of the planet who do not yet have smartphones get access to them. And products such as Facebook Live, Twitter's Periscope, and Snapchat drive current smartphone users to take more, now live, video. But the real step change is around the corner. Augmented reality, goggles, will become mass market and will need to record a constant video feed of what the user is seeing to be able to augment the view with software. Today, Microsoft HoloLens and Snapchat Spectacles are leading and have a very small penetration. But many smart, well-funded people are working on making AR work. Spearheaded by $5 billion in funding and 700-plus employees, stealth startup Magic Leap. Autonomous vehicles, AVs, will become mass market and will capture continuous, high-definition, high-frame rate, 360-degree video. This is huge when you consider the scale of this AV revolution as a replacement for all cars today, but even more mind-blowing when you consider the role AVs in an even bigger market, logistics. As the market demands increasingly on-demand goods, Amazon now offer one-hour deliveries, AVs, including drone, will be the cost-effective path for companies to satiate this need. If driving the vehicle is free and powering it becomes practically free, with the advantages in electric engines efficiency and solar power. Why not get 10 shirts shipped to your door for you to try on and return the 9 you don't like? For more info on this, my friend Alex Flamant gave a prescient talk on this topic at the London Futurist Meetup. As these technological evolutions march on, we are getting closer to continuous HD video recording of every square meter of every part of this globe. Now, as awesome as some videos are, here's a funny one, We link to that below. No one is going to sit through and watch all of this stuff. From video to insight. Fueled by this explosion of video data, there have been incredible advances in computer vision over the last 20 years. Let's start with some you may not be aware of. Videos as microphones. Very high-definition silent video feeds can now be processed by algorithms to reconstruct the sound as it was in the area filmed. This works by being able to recognize tiny vibration motions caused by sound on surrounding objects, some of the same technology that enables us to get someone's heart rate from a video feed. In a striking example in this video, researchers are able to recover a conversation by filming a packet of crisps from behind soundproof glass. We'll link to that video below. 
the recovery is good enough to understand what people were saying, and there was no sound recorded at all. While there is no reason for AVs, CCTVs, etc. not to record sound, these techniques may help get better sound definition, especially at long distances and in noisy places. Natural language processing. Your clumsy Google Now or Siri may betray this today, but in the research lab, we're there in terms of reliability going from sound to text. As with facial recognition, the explosion of data on which to train NLP algorithms from conversational interfaces in smartphones, bots, and Amazon Alexa Google home speakers has spurred this innovation. In 2016, Microsoft beat human benchmarks for speech recognition. Shortly after, Google showed off new ways to do live translation for eight language pairs, showing that the innovation is perfectly comfortable whizzing past what most humans can do. Facial recognition can be considered solved. In June 2015, Jan Lakin, head of artificial intelligence at Facebook, announced that on the set of 40,000 pictures from Flickr, Facebook's algorithms were able to correctly identify faces of 83% of cases. Interestingly, people's faces didn't have to always be in the picture. With enough data about the user, the algorithm could use other cues, such as clothing, to identify them. Mark seems to wear a lot of gray t-shirts. Photo-based recognition is continuously improved with the explosion of photos and the continuous feedback Facebook and Google get as users tag their friends in pictures. With video and a history of each user's habits, clothing style, and locations, the algorithms will easily surpass people in recognizing who is who. Remember the last time you struggled to recognize someone you hadn't seen in a few years? They might also take visual cues better than you. Extracting the needle from the haystack. AI systems are capable of inferring high-level concepts, features, from raw data. For example, faces are a feature that is inferred from raw pixels forming the video feed. This effectively makes all video and all sounds searchable. Clarify.io is an example of a company providing a service to do this. We'll link to them below. But AI goes much further than enabling humans to search. It can effectively perform all possible searches for you and return higher level features, interesting patterns, anomalous events. It also does so across as many data sources as are available, joining the data sets on common identifiers across them. So it's not, there's a face in this video. It's also the name behind the face, the internet breadcrumb of this person, including all other locations where this face was seen ever, all browsing activity, all messaging, all social network opinions, etc., and any other data set that might be available. These AI systems will continue to improve, and each improved version will reprocess the raw data. Say the UK police runs an algorithm through all public CCTV recordings from the last week, looking for a criminal's face. Today's algorithm may not find it, but a future version will. So what are the implications of these advances? Commercial implications. Advertisers, insurers, retailers, banks will feast on this new data like they have done with all other internet data so far. The aim remains to build a detailed profile of you to sell you more stuff and quantify the risk and liability you represent. Ubiquitous video combined with ever-improving AI systems provide your socioeconomic status, where you live, where you work, and how much you earn, whether you drop off the kids at school, who you hang out with, where, how frequently. Your shopping habits, where you shop, what you wear, what your friends wear, what you have to wear at work. Your health, how active you are, whether you smoke, drink, which kinds of restaurants you visit or order from, how many doctor visits have you been to. It also brings up some interesting forecasting opportunities at a more macro level. Benedict Evans, Cameras, E-Commerce, and Machine Learning, quote, what happens to the fashion industry when half a dozen static $100 cameras can tell you everything that anyone in Shoreditch wore this year? When you can trace a trend through social and street photography from start to mass market, and then look for the next emerging patterns, end quote. It seems inevitable that these video-sourced insights will be resold by the AV companies in the same way that Google and Facebook sell targeting based on browsing history and likes. The commercial opportunity is huge. Whether this happens officially will depend on the nature of regulations surrounding this use of video data. Unofficially, given fibrility of security on the internet, this data will get used for commercial means. Privacy Implications 
As Gregory Ferenstein brilliantly lays out in The Birth and Death of Privacy, full transparency is humanity's natural state. Privacy, as a concept, is only about 150 years old. For a long time, it was not materially possible to have any form of privacy as we'd think about it today. Tribal communities all lived together in caves. Romans all lived in one-room houses. Medieval families and servants all slept in the same bed. There was no practical concept of private space or individual intimacy. As private life became possible, physically with separate houses, rooms, beds, and through communication with new technologies, like writing in the telephone, the desire for privacy emerged. The first privacy-oriented law in the U.S. was the 1710 Post Office Act, which banned sorting through the mail by postal employees. Nonetheless, privacy has always remained a secondary concern to convenience and cost. This explains the consistent, broad adoption of new technologies which encroach on our privacy but are deemed worth it. Today, autonomous vehicles is one of the new technologies to evaluate. Isn't it crazy that today we let people drive a ton of steel at hundreds of miles per hour just with a few signs telling them not to press on a pedal too much? It is. And it causes 30,000 deaths per year in the U.S. alone. That's one every 17 minutes. With autonomous vehicles, this number will significantly decrease, which by itself makes this technology very attractive. But what are the privacy implications? This time, you can't opt out. The smartphone and internet revolution has also been a profound change, but you could choose not to have a smartphone or not to use Facebook, Google, or any other services that make a living collecting and selling your data. In the video everywhere world, tracking moves fully offline. The moment you step outside, all your movements are streamed to a database, timestamped, geolocated, and added to your digital profile. You can't opt out. To delay this day as much as possible, you could, one, make sure your face is not on the internet, two, live in a place that will have AVs last, for example, North Korea, three, live in a cloudy place such that drones and satellites struggle to see you from afar. On the plus side, I bet your rent will be cheaper there. 100% enforceability. As we all know, the USA pioneered surveillance without warrant state is in vogue at the moment. For example, with the recent UK's snooper charter bill becoming law, or the emergency state being preserved in France. Video everywhere means potentially one more source data from which to find anomalous citizen behavior. This will be used by intelligence agencies for defense purposes, but it directly affects you and me in the hands of your average prosecutor. Law becomes 100% enforceable. If the prosecutor can codify all infractions in a video processing algorithm, say, jaywalking, to take a particularly ridiculous law, and run it on all video ever taken of public life in the U.S., it could then immediately charge all jaywalkers. This is Edward Snowden. Quote, I think the most important idea is to remember that there have been times throughout American history where what is right is not the same as what is legal. End quote. Another factor to consider is the increased breadth and effectiveness of cybercrime that results from more data collection, particularly video data. As tracking moves to offline, physical world, so does the targeting. You could, for instance, imagine a drone being hijacked to go and hurt someone who was identified by hacking into an AV's video feed. What now? Today, the public debate about autonomous vehicles and AI focuses on the most pressing issue, the economic and societal impact of automating millions of jobs, such as truck driver, which is the most important job in America. This is what the electorate is most worried about. However, the privacy implications of autonomous vehicles also need a place in this public debate. Autonomous vehicles should be a deliberate societal choice made after the pros and cons have been carefully weighed, including the privacy impact. The output of this debate should be clear regulation that addresses which data can be collected from AV video cameras, in which format, what should be anonymized and how, where this data will be stored, shared, and secured, for how long, and with what control will the public have on it, who will control the algorithms for processing video information, and how will we assess their effectiveness and regulatory compliance? Will judges need to learn code? Will law become code? As the finishing touches are applied to the technology, Elon Musk expects the first autonomous Tesla by 2018, it is time for the policy debate to seriously consider the impact of privacy. 
So far in my research, all I have seen in the U.S. on this is one bill introduced by two Democrat senators called Security and Privacy in Your Care Act of 2015. This bill aims to, quote, protect against unauthorized access to, one, electronic controls or driving data, including information about the vehicle's location, speed, owner, driver, or passengers, or, two, driving data collected by electronic systems built into a vehicle while that data is stored on board the vehicle, in transit from the vehicle to another location, or subsequently stored or used off board the vehicle. End quote. As reported here, this bill was introduced in July 2015, and executives from Google, General Motors, Delphi, and Lyft appeared before a U.S. Senate committee on March 15, 2015 to discuss it. The executives were asked whether there should be minimum standards for privacy and cybersecurity and all but one participant declined to say yes or no. Since then, the bill has not been discussed further. Autonomous vehicles may bring about a step change in public tracking and surveillance. Everything, everywhere continuously recorded, this time with no way to opt out. I'd love to be proved wrong, but it seems that privacy is a complete afterthought in the push towards our driverless future. Thanks for reading. Feel free to reach out with any thoughts by replying here or on my Twitter. We'll have that link below. Thanks for listening. You can find more episodes just like this at tfpodcast.io. Again, thank you to Ernest Opetit. You can find more of his writing on medium.com. We'll also have that link below. And thank you to the sponsor of today's episode, Presence Media. You can visit them at presencemediadenver.com. That link will also be listed below. Be sure to subscribe to our channels on YouTube and iTunes, or visit us at tfpodcast.io. All of those links will be listed below. Thanks for listening.